welcome to Astro Talks with Los Angeles-based professional astrologer, Astro Chris, your source for weekly astrology, spiritual talk, and moon magic. Your energetic support is much appreciated, and I thank you for your five-star rating. You are a star. Gracias. Now, this week's astrology, the hot topic is the new moon in Gemini. And Mercury, stationing direct. And Saturn, stationing retro. So let's start with the new moon in Gemini. Now, this may very well be one of the best lunations of the year. We are having the moon and the sun conjunct the fixed star Aldebaran. This star is dedicated and appointed to Archangel Michael. And it sits at that nine degree mark. So we're having new beginnings with angelic protection. Now, although this new moon is much more better than the past eclipse lunations we've had, we still have the continuance of the eclipses being highlighted by this new moon. The reason being because we have Mercury at 26 degrees in Taurus and it's conjunct the fixed star Al Gol. And that is a highlighted point that we experienced during the lunations. So for the eclipse lunation of the full moon in Scorpio, we had the sun at 26 degrees in Taurus and we had the moon at 26 degrees in Scorpio. So we have here Mercury reactivating that eclipse energy. Now eclipse season is over. However, as you can see, this was a very potent eclipse season because the following lunation is also highlighting the same aspects where we had some activity with the solar and lunar eclipses. So take note. Additionally, the ruler of Gemini is Mercury, and Mercury is retro still. So this means we're still working on things that we seeded, topics that were brought up during the eclipse season, and the conversation is continuing. Now, when the sun is in Gemini, Gemini marks the shifting of spring and sets foot the beginning of summer. Thus, during Gemini season, we are more active. We are revitalized to go outside and mingle and talk and be more friendly. And we're looking for mind and body stimulation. We become more curious about our surroundings and want to go out. This is also seen by the ruler's placement. So since Mercury is in Taurus, the ruler of Mercury right now is Venus and Venus is in her home sign. She is in her full on empress expression, the goddess of nature and love and sensuality. So we're having this conversation of wanting to connect, wanting to go outside and be part of nature. During Venus's transit in Taurus, she will also be triggering the same eclipse degrees that were experienced during eclipse season so again continuing with that energy triggering those points it's like final purging that's really what it is we also have to take a look at what mercury is doing and since mercury is still retro this is the second conjunction he will make with that fixed star algal and algal has been making headlines in the news lately Algol is a star that has been documented in several cultures to be very, very detrimental. And this is due to a misunderstanding. Now, this star can bring a lot of riches. The thing is, there's always a level of misunderstanding, misinterpretation that someone's perspective in power creates an opinion, thus affecting the other. In the mythology of Algol and how Algol is formed, um, this is a shield that has Medusa's head. And when we go back to Medusa's mythology, she was a dev devotee of Pallas Athena. 
And according to legend, there's two stories or a few versions of the story. One of them being that she gave into the temptation of connecting to Poseidon. And the other mythology is that Poseidon forced himself on Medusa and she could not fight the temptation. Now she was discovered by Pallas Athena and without allowing her to provide an explanation, she cursed her, making her ugly and also making any man that would set eyes on her turn into stone. So there was a big misunderstanding. Now, whether she was forced to make love with Poseidon or she was seduced to make love with Poseidon, it's still something that should not carry that big of a punishment. And this is the reason why this star is very heavy and very detrimental when it's utilized or activated in um, incorrect ways. And it's because of the vengeance part. Now, Medusa did seek vengeance. She wasn't sticking around to explain herself to Pallas Athena. She said, you know what? You did this to me, and now I'm going to create havoc everywhere. And that's what she did, right? She was hunted at that point. So going back to the astrology of the new moon in Gemini, Mercury being there is going to bring in some deep, deep subjects. Now, the energy of Gemini is much more mental and focused on logically processing things versus the ruler being in Taurus is more focused on feeling and sensing. So we should utilize our senses. This is a time that we need to go and ground and we need to see with all our senses, activate every single sense, touch, smell, feel, just really embody everything so we can get better perspective of what's going on. Mercury is also being very activated by some meaningful aspects and this is a square to Saturn which will go retro after Mercury goes direct so there's a um, energy of stagnation an energy of standstill of freezing time in a way and when Saturn squares Mercury it really does impact how rapid or how quick our mind can either generate conclusions or process information because Saturn likes to slow things down and Mercury is quick. Mercury likes to speak fast and be here and there and multitask. So Saturn is providing some grounding and some perspective to Mercury so we can process things a little bit more slower <laughs> that's what it is slower and mercury is also making a trine to pluto which brings that very in-depth perspective talking about issues that are connected to that plutonian energy which can be topics of abuse topics of power topics of empowerment topics of transformation releasing trauma changing trauma so you can see how deep that is felt within us and we also have a sextile that's being formed by Mercury to Neptune. And Neptune, he doesn't necessarily bring a lot of clarity, but what he will bring is intuitive insight. Because Neptune rules seeing with the third eye, a place that is in our heads, in our imagination, where we can really find the answers if we listen and pay attention to signs, synchronicities, and alignments that are happening all around us. So overall, this new moon in Gemini is a little bit lighter than the previous lunations, but there's still hidden depth within it. We also have Mercury in Taurus going direct on June 2nd at 8.45 p.m. PST, and that would be 11 45 
p.m. EST. When Mercury goes direct or stations direct, he would be at 26 degrees, still reinforcing that square that he has with Saturn at 25 degrees. So both this day and the day that Saturn goes retrograde are going to start a more slowing down of the energy. We're going to see that we're going to have a different mindset or thought process as Saturn is going to impact the way that we are processing and making logic of the things that are occurring right now. So Saturn goes retro on June 4th and that is going to be at 3.15 in the morning a.m. PST and 6.15 a.m. EST. When Saturn goes retro, he'll be at 25 degrees and he's not really making any aspects to any of the other planets other than a semi-sextile to Neptune and also a separating square to Mercury. So again, this is bringing a little bit of confusion with that semi-sextile to Neptune, another semi sextile to Pluto, and that square to Mercury. Highlighting the lunation, just focusing on new beginnings around our thought process, but really trying to embody these changes, these new connectivities that we're making using emotional intelligence and approaching new concepts and new way of taking action and bringing things into our reality by really thinking things through and slowing down our actions. So thank you so much for being here. And don't forget to catch me live on Thursdays on Ask the Astrologer segment where I go live on IG and I answer the audience's questions. I do that weekly. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for being here and your five-star rating is much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, or whatever platform that you are catching this forecast.